The Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club. It's very, 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 very big. Movie. You guys are changing the entire scene. The culture has hot. Well, y'all done came a long way. They might not watch the news, but you know, they're listening to The Breakfast Club. Who to go? Let's go. DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, and Charlemagne the God. Y'all are like a mega force. Breakfast Club. That's how we get our day started. All right, all right, all right. Yo 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 Jess Hilario, good morning. Charlemagne the God. Beast to the planet, it's Tuesday! Yes, it's Tuesday. Good morning. What's happening? Another day to serve. What's going on? That's right. Back from a three-day weekend. Three now, yesterday was what? President's Day? Yes, yeah, President's Day. President's Day. That's right. I don't even know what holiday it was. I was just happy to have the day the day off. That's yes. Right. How yes. was your weekend? What you did? I was in uh, Atlanta all weekend. I was at um, my daughter's cheer, cheerleading, cheerleading competition. It's called Cheer Sport. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. That was so funny, right? I'm glad that you said that because mm -hmm. one of my friends that hit me up, right? Mm -hmm. One of my gay friends. He hit me up and he was like, you would never believe who I saw creeping in a, um, at a cheer convention in Atlanta. And I was like, who was creeping? <laughs> he was like, girl, Charlemagne. And I was like, oh, he was creeping in the cheer convention. <laughs> I said, well, he has a 15-year-old daughter and she cheers. He was like, Oh, okay, because he was like low key giving. I met him and I, I saw, I wanted to, you know, I love Charlemagne. So I walked up to him and I spoke to him. And girl, he was like low key giving a little bit. Low so key I was giving like, what? That's what I said. I said, giving what? And he was like, you know what I'm talking about. You no egg down. So I was flirting. like, so I was like, did you see his wife? Because his wife was there. He was like, his wife? I said, yes. He was like, uh uh, see, you you see how these married men give mixed signals. Wow. He, was low, he low key gave a little bit. I was like, oh, he don't even care. So you low key giving in front of your wife? He gave what? Shut your silly ass up, young man. <laughs> he would give Okay? Uh -uh. That was wrong with men. Men always think somebody want them just because you nice. That's you know what, what I mean? Uh, when, when straight men, uh, when, a, when a woman is nice to a straight man, mm -hmm. straight man's like, oh, he want me. When a man is, a straight man is nice to a gay man, now the gay man think I want him. I'm, you, I'm giving. No. Well, how nice were you? Yeah. I don't even remember this person. He was probably squinting his little eyes. Squinting his you little know, eyes. Oh, hey, you know, little light skin look. They want to massage yeah. him on his shoulders. Did, did how you, you doing, brother? Like, I say, well, did, did you, you get the book? I speak to everybody. I speak to everybody. I say, what's up? You know, you say you show me love, I show you love back. Uh -huh. We and Jess do the same, but we don't. We don't ever get no, accused of flirting. Like, how oh, you doing? What's up? What's up? How well, you doing? They don't find y'all attractive. Clearly, he finds me attractive. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly, in his yeah. mind, he, he wants me to be given. Yeah, he was, he was giving. giving. He was, he was creeping at the chair he convention. Was creeping <laughs> at the chair convention. <laughs> people be so stupid. Somebody be see people. What you, what you doing here? The hell, you think I'm? Here? I'm just here to be here with all these kids. <laughs> all the kids. I can't have a kid. I'm just sitting there watching chairs. It's just something I do on the weekend. The same thing you doing here. Yeah, watching your daughter cheer. That's right. Yes. What you do this weekend, Envy? Uh, I was all over the place. Uh, first, I was in Atlanta. Then I was in Indiana. Nice. Uh, then I came back for a sal uh, salute to Lincoln Tech. They had their commencement uh, graduation, so I did the commencement speech. Hey. Then I don't I believe that. I need, I need video of this. <laughs> <laughs> you keep telling us this, but I need video. He said he didn't read. He went off script. I know that was crazy. <laughs> Envy, when, you don't ever want Envy to be off script. Oh, uh, my God. Like I said, so salute to the Lincoln Tech students. Then I went to uh, Maris College. I didn't know Maris College was a, a D1 school that is like 30 minutes away. So I went to go watch the basketball game. Nice. They have a, a, a black pro, a, a black president now. So she's starting to do more for the students. So she has, I think, KRS One is coming this week to talk to the students. Ooh, so nice. she's bringing people to actually talk to the students to try to change the culture at Marist College. So I was over there. Then I was at. Uh, Pennsylvania. Then I went to Norfolk. I was all over the place. Yeah. I was all over the place. I'm glad you recovered. Yeah, no, What'd I did recover. I was all. I was. Yes. When I say sick, sick, I was sick, uh -huh. sick. That flu kicked my ass. But yeah. we back. How, what you did this weekend? What you do, pregnant woman? Uh, I I was pregnant all weekend. Really? And I did, mm -hmm. and I did a lot of things. I, I spent. Um, this weekend, getting my penthouse together, y'all. Hey. So yeah, I'm I'm fully moved in. This was my first time driving to work. From New Jersey, and yo. I'm about to get towed first thing today. First thing this morning, what you mean? yeah. You, try, you know you can't tow on, park on the street. She parked no, in the I wrong didn't. place. I parked in the wrong place, <laughs> and and like it, it's a different garage, right? So the guy was like, "Yo, yo, yo," and I was like, "Now nah, you keep walking." He just want a picture, and he's like, "No, you have to move your car." And I, was <laughs> <so> <laughs> it wasn't just, I was calling her before the guy was calling her. I'm like, no, keep your head. This is in New York. Everybody like, want a picture. Who she no. calling Everybody want a picture. <laughs> I get it, though. It's early in the morning. It's nah, just keep outside. walking. Keep walking. Hey, yo, move your car. Oh, my what bad. I'm trying to tell you. My bad. My bad. I'm like, I don't know you. You got move your car. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. We got front page news. A lot to discuss. Did y'all, were y'all watching All Star Weekend this weekend? The yes. game and oh, all my gosh. Yeah. The dunk contest. It wasn't really as impressive it was trash. as over the years. It was trash. Shout out to Chris McClung, though. He did the best. Who? 
Chris McClung or Mac McClung or something like that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mac McClung, y'all. My bad. <laughs> Mac McClung, we'll talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, this weekend was All-Star Week out in Indiana. There was a lot of stuff going on. Of course, the slam dunk contest. It was the three-point contest. Steph Curry had the, I guess it was the shootout contest. It was the first ever men versus women. Uh, Steph Curry won 29-26. Damian Lillard won the three-point contest. Mm-hmm. Um, who won the uh, dunk contest? Mac McClung. Okay. Did y'all see that double clap on the ball that he did? I've never seen that before in my life. You don't even know what you're talking about. Yes, I did. <laughs> No, that was the first that, The first round Yes he did He double clapped it I was like I don't like it With some cheeks She texted me that this week And I said Who sent you that Your son No <laughs> Your I watched son it told you that? No my son don't even be On basketball He like football Okay yes. and, uh, and the all star game The West loses The East won 211 to 186 uh, Damian Lillard Also got the uh, MVP honors He scored 39 points Yeah I don't know What uh, the all star game Needs to be more exciting you know, as far as the game, it probably just needs some sort of stakes. Like, maybe the winning team gets home court advantage in the NBA Finals. As far as the dunk contest, I don't think the dunk contests are going to get better until, like, you know, uh, human beings are able to do more things with their body while they're in the air. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, they didn't. Well, at the Universal Soul Circus, I've seen better creativity at, with slam dunks. But, but you got to still do that with a ball in your hand. You know yeah. what I'm saying? What you're saying is true. No, like, yeah. You need to be able to do stuff like that and hold the ball and dunk it. Right. Well, Stephen you know? A. Smith blames the whack dunk contest on the LeBron James. Oh my God! That's what he said. That's how dare he say that? Why he say? Did he say why? No, we waiting for the order. Here we go. Oh. LeBron James is directly oh. responsible for ruining the slam. <laughs> Oh, God, are you serious? Yes, he is. Thank you. Said, yes, he is. Because when we're talking about the slam dunk contest from 1985 to 1997, five of the 13 slam dunk contests were won by future Hall of Famers Jordan twice, Dominique Wilkins twice, Kobe once. Michael Jordan participated in the contest three times. Dominique Wilkins, five times. Five. Every, every high jumper, every skywalker, every above-the-rim talent, salivated for the opportunity to compete in the slam dunk contest. It stopped when LeBron James said, I'm not doing it. Mm. And from that point forward, the stars who followed didn't feel compelled to prioritize a slam dunk contest. He's not wrong, but he's not all the way he's right He's not the either. full reason. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, We'd it's, love to see LeBron do the slam dunk contest, but he's not the reason. Well, yeah, it's nuanced to that. He's saying that LeBron is responsible for stars feeling like they don't have, have to, to compete do in Correct. the slam dunk contest mm-hmm. anymore. But he's not responsible for the slam dunk contest, you know, being whack. I think that the slam dunk contest is kind of whack just because the human body isn't physically capable of doing certain things. Mm. I don't like, think It's kind of so. peaked a little bit. Yeah, well, some of these... Some of these people that don't play in the NBA, if you ever see their videos of them doing wild dunks, yeah. they're still doing wild like, stuff. Like, I've seen it before. They're still doing wild stuff. They probably, they're, they're by, I don't know, they mm. put them in the slam dunk contest. Then. Yeah. Well, like, also, we have uh, Teslin Figaro on the line. We had some uh, technical difficulties uh, connecting her this morning, but she's on the phone lines. Good morning, Tez. Good morning, DJ Envy. Good morning, Jess Larry. It's Charlemagne the guy. Good morning, Peace, girl. Tess. Let's jump right into Charlemagne on ABC. Yes, our own Charlamagne God was featured on ABC News this weekend on a show called This Week. Now, he had all the major ca- cable news chiming in on his comments this weekend. Let's go to ABC News because I want you guys to know why they thought it was important to hear from Charlamagne. Take a listen. He's one of the most influential voices in morning radio. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Jess Hilarious. I don't know what the hell envy is that. Also a television personality, podcast host, and New York Times bestselling author. His interviews with pop stars and politicians making viral moments. Leonard McKelvey, known to America as Charlemagne the God, has built his following on charisma, comedy, and blunt questions. In the last presidential election, the Breakfast Club became a must-stop for Democratic candidates. With an average of more than 6 million monthly listeners, candidates sought to appeal to its younger, diverse audience. No salute to Jonathan Carr for those kind words. And salute to you. Thank you. Uh, salute yes. to you. Shout out to Charlemagne. And so um, I want to ask you, Charlemagne. So Jonathan Carl, uh, who you just mentioned, who interviewed you, the first question that he asked, there was a lot of things that you got into. The, the interview was actually nine minutes, I believe, 13 seconds. And the first thing he asked you was your, um, you kind of categorized this year as an election between the crooks, the cowards, and the couch. 
break that down for us and what that means. Oh, like I always say, you know, uh, 2024 is going to be uh, uh, you either going to vote for the Republicans who are the crooks, the the Democrats who are the cowards because they don't fight for nothing, or people are just going to choose to, to stay at home on the couch. And, you know, the way things are looking right now, I think the couch is going to win. I don't know who that's going to benefit by people staying home. But, you know, it looks to me like the couch is going to win this year. People are not enthused. Mm -hmm. They're not energized by this upcoming election at all. Mm -hmm. And you also talked about how uh, the election was between Trump, who you uh, said was a threat to democracy, versus Joe Biden as an uninspiring candidate. Mm -hmm. um, what did you mean by that? Because a lot of people went in one direction. It was so interesting watching how people broke down your commentary. Um, people kind of pick and choose, you know, uh, what you're talking about. So break break yeah, those down yeah. on how you... I don't know how that's even rocket science to anybody. You saw a guy, you know, uh, lead an attempted coup of this country. Mm -hmm. You know, you've heard a guy say that, you know, you should terminate the Constitution to overthrow the results of an election. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen a guy, you know, put people on the Supreme Court or rolling back people's, you know, civil rights and civil liberties. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't see how that's a uh, rocket science for anybody to understand. That is a clear threat to democracy mm -hmm. versus somebody who's just born. Mm -hmm. So, you know. All right. Well, that Cho is choose, choose wisely. That is front page <laughs> news. And uh, we'll have Tez with us again next hour. Now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Oh, uh, my name is Julian. What's up, Julian? Get it off your chest. So, so kind of refer back to the All Star game. Um, I don't know if you guys heard Kobe Bryant when he was talking about the All Star game should be the best pickup game in the world. Right, I did. So, I heard that. I heard him say that before. We have lots of great players in this generation play basketball. So, me take a couple of thousand dollars on and watch everybody. You know, move that away so they can do weird things that they can do in the dunk contest. That kind of pisses me off. Oh, so you pay you so pay to go to the game? Yep, I actually I did a couple Damn. thousand dollars actually. Mm. They just yeah. got they they just got to put some stakes on it. I think it should be like whoever wins, whether it's the East or West, whoever wins, uh, that 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 team gets uh, home court advantage in the NBA Finals. The problem with that is is if you play on the All Star team and you know you, I'm sure they're looking at it like if I get injured, that's the rest of my season. So how hard am I going to play for a game that's not necessarily matter? You people know? play, people play hard. Back in the day, like they he's did. right. I was watching that. Uh, I, I guess it came on. The, I forgot what year it was. The year was Allen Iverson and Stephon Marbury and, and Kobe Bryant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They was balling. And I'm like, yeah, I remember that game. Yep. So it's just like I just think they need to put some stakes on the game. Like there's no stakes to it. Or keep the, you know, it, you have to have the lowest score get you more points or something like that. You know, what I mean, that way you have people playing defense. I, I, I really think it should be for home court advantage. Whoever wins should get home court advantage in the NBA Finals. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake up. Wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God, Jeff Hilarious. Good morning, people. How you doing? Coach Good morning. Davis. Coach Davis, what's up, bro? Get it off your chest. Yeah, man, listen. Uh, Charlemagne, my, my man, I've been listening to you since you came to the airways, man. And I want to say something to you, bro. I really, really appreciate you. And I want to give you your flowers, brother, because over the time, the past couple months, man, I've been hearing, you know, your thoughts politically, man, and I've loved the way you've grown. And... I also watched this week, yes, uh, Sunday, man. I couldn't wait to get on the phone. I didn't know y'all was in, wasn't in yesterday. I wasn't thinking about the holiday. But brother, I really appreciate you, man, your thoughts and, and, and how you put them together, you know, and I think you're a real voice right now for this generation, man, politically. Thank you. And I want to say that you, you, you remind me of a gentleman by the name of Petey Green, man. I, I, I did some research on him, man. And, um, you you you're that dude, bro. I, I really appreciate you. That is the ultimate you know, compliment. Now, that is my favorite radio personality of all time. Hey man, listen, the, the dude the dude calmed the city in Washington during a riot. So that's a, that says a lot, you know. But oh damn, my bad. 
Get it off your chest. Why and, you hang up on that man when he talking good about me? No, he did. He was about to go into the All-Star game. That's why I was waiting. Mm. You so evil. I am so evil. I was oh, waiting because I was waiting for him to finish. But, y- but y'all should watch uh, Talk To Me. Talk, th- Talk To Me is a movie uh, about P.D. Green. It stars Don Cheadle as P.D. Green. Mm-hmm. Roger P. Henson is in it as well, too. That's right. Great, mm. great movie. Hello, who's this? Good morning. This is George. Hey. Thank you for taking my call. Hey, George. Good morning. Get it off your chest. I don't know why. Just, I, and I hate jumping on the immigration ban, but... Why can't we just suspend this thing for a while and let's clean up the mess that we already have? We keep bringing more people in and it's like filling up a box and things. You can't close the top because it's too full. Why can't we just say, you know, that's it. We can't take any more people, no vacancy, and let's clean up the mess that we have. Because the the ones that are coming in are are just, you see them every day on the news, robbing us, stealing and they, there's no bail, so they get right back out and do the same thing. You know, it's just, where's ICE? That's what I want to know. I have no idea. Who is we, though? <laughs> <laughs> we? I mean, New York City. I say New York City. Man, you should we be have called, the mayor. He call Mayor Eric saying, Adams' office. I've tried that. Oh, Believe no. me. I've, I've done that. I've written to them. But, you know, I'm just one man. If, if maybe 500 men do it, maybe they'll do something about it. Yeah, I'll never forget. I'll never forget when Eric Adams told everybody to come to New York City. And they he came. Told, he told, <laughs> they haven't he stopped told coming. Pause. The migrants, come on mm-hmm. to New York. We That's welcome right. you with open arms. And oh, only, only for that tune to change very, very, very quick. And at one point, at what point is he going to just admit that those Republicans were right? <laughs> that there is a problem. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Just say it. Just go ahead and admit it, and then maybe we can fix it. That's right. Well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Now we got Jess with the mess coming up. Yes, we do. Kelly Rowland reportedly walks off the Today Show over dressing room issue. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. And let's get to Jess with the mess. <laughs> Kelly Rowland walked off the Today Show set. Uh, so she was supposed to sit down with Hoda and Jenna, and uh, she reportedly left abruptly because she wasn't happy with the conditions of her dressing room she had. Apparently, the building is old, and um, it's... A tiny is tiny dressing rooms, but uh, but they was trying to say like, oh, we have tiny dressing rooms anyway. But the fact that J Lo was there to pr- promote her new album, and upcoming film, and she had the biggest one, she had like the main one, which was bigger than I guess the little closet one mm-hmm. that they tried to give Kelly. Um, uh, before leaving, Kelly asked to be moved to a larger room or whatever, and and they actually denied her. So she didn't just assume because I seen comments like, well, she assumed that JLo was in, was in there. She asked to be moved. She didn't just abruptly leave. She did ask to be moved, and they said no. JLo is uh, uh, occupying that one. So Rita Ora was also on set to talk about the mass Singer, and uh, she was pulled on to fill Kelly's role last minute. Um, a lot of celebrities like jump to her defense while other uh celebrities starting to call her a diva they was accusing her to be a diva marla waynes came to her defense who i thought was was really nice basically he was just saying stop with the false narratives um i've worked with kelly and i will honestly say she was nothing short of amazing sweet kind professional you know giving her her flowers and um i agree with that i agree with that like like usher just told us me and you charlotte we have to hold our icons like up high mm-hmm. up high and I believe that you know it's Calendria rolling like why why wouldn't we after that she went wow. on wow yeah yeah don't play with me wow so Perfect she went of the name absolutely so she went on Cherie <laughs> Shepard show right wrong Sherry she, Shepard Sh- Sherry oh my gosh y'all don't know her like that so no listen <laughs> she went on Sherry Shepard show and this is the audio that we pulled from there okay this is your show Uh but can we take just I I have to tell you thank you for being light positive energy in this space in this time we needed you and I thank you so much for your life oh queen I'm thank you so much and that was sweet so she didn't really talk directly about the her experience at the today show but um online people were saying I guess our dressing room was acceptable at the uh Sherry Shepard show and then Sherry Shepard commented back she commented back to somebody and said oh we gave her a gorgeous room it is Calendria Rowland so uh shout out to Sherry you know because she actually made that happen she knows how to lift our icons up obviously yeah Yeah, I can't even believe this is a story drop on the clues bombs with Kelly Rowland I have no problem with what Kelly Rowland did. If you 
You yeah. ask these people to take time out of their lives to come co-host your programs. Treat them with respect. Mm -hmm. If she feels like she's not being treated with the respect she deserves, she has every right to walk away. Stop yeah. acting like y'all doing talent a favor by putting them on your show. On the show. That's right. And realize nowadays talent is doing you a favor right. yeah. by showing up because most talents don't need these looks in 2020. Mm -hmm. And like you said, she was supposed to guest co-host. It wasn't like she was there as right. a guest and she came Just to pull to up. No, she was a guest yeah. co-host and if she felt like the dressing room wasn't up to her standard, she didn't like it. She has the ability to be like, you know what? F it, I'm out. That's yeah, right. and she asked to be moved. Some people just would have left, but she asked. I, I still thought that was very professional. Um, but uh, Kelly has a movie coming out with Tyler Perry on Netflix. It's called Mia Culpa, y'all. So make sure y'all watch that. Absolutely. Uh, Monique responds to her son's uh, viral TikTok videos. Uh, so she did a comedy show not too long ago. She was on stage as a part of Cat Williams' tour. And this is a joke that she told. I'm coming to that motherfucker and I've been just seeing this motherfucker TikTok. Of my goddamn son. And I'm walking through the motherfucking North Airport, and this elderly woman comes up to me. She said, Monique. I said, ma'am. She said, let me talk to you for a minute. So I had prepared myself for this old woman to tell me how fucked up I was. I prepared myself to be respectful, but to check the f if I had to. I prepared myself to listen. She said, listen. My grandbaby called me and told me to watch this goddamn TikTok of your son. And I watched this shit. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I want to tell you something. I said, ma'am. She said, fuck that nigga. Eighty-year-old woman come up to you in Newark, in the Newark airport, and tell you that uh, her grandbaby told her to watch a TikTok. Eighty years old. Now nah, you done got stuck in Newark train station before. I have. So you can't see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, could, I could definitely <laughs> see that. Not the airports, not the train station. I could definitely see that in Newark airport I could see too. Eighty-year-old woman. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, whatever she did or whatever she did, <laughs> I still don't ever think it's cool to ever be like f your kids. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Not. I I didn't like it when Corey Holcomb said f his daughter, and I don't even like him. But I I can literally like I don't like that. You know what I mean? We obviously don't. I I honestly don't even like how they they put it out there. Her and her husband that he has a. Uh, mental health issues or whatever like that you know we obviously see there's a, a hurt child he's a grown man but this should just all not be on, online, online mm -hmm. on the stage go repair that go repair that I agree with everything you're saying Jess but that's the sad part about when you make something public when you make something public now everybody feels like it's their business too hmm. and so now somebody coming up to you telling you F your child and it's like whoa 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 you don't get to say that Yeah, right. you know what I'm saying I yeah. might feel like that but yeah. you don't get to say that but then again do they get to say that because it is public it is so they have an opinion about it and, and Monique was the first person to bring it up right she was the first yeah. person to talk about it and the young man responded mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, people not can make their own opinion. Not even an 80-year-old woman can walk up to me and tell me, F my son. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with last you. day, yeah. 80. I'm telling you. Like, <laughs> well, I don't care what me and my son going through. Like she Kobe will not did. see 81. And she lived a long, great life anyway. Don't play. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> but no, remove us from the group chat, though. I don't yeah, want to know yeah, any more of yeah. Monique's family business. Repair like, that. That's none of our business. Repair Take that. us out. Chris Brown calls out Ruffles for being uninvited after being invited. Uh to the Celebrity All-Star Game. So, it, it's no secret he took to uh, Instagram and, and uh, Twitter when Chris Brown said that he was asked to participate in the Celebrity All-Star Game and then uninvited because certain sponsors like Ruffles had an issue with it. Um, so, there's no need to read what he said, but Ruffles responded to the accusations claiming that they had no involvement in who plays in the game. Um, and so Chris Brown responded back and was like, man, y'all trying to save face. Y'all already know what's up. Stand on business. Don't try to make it look like I'm tripping. You and the NBA representatives know exactly what y'all doing. And he actually posted like emails of them actually inviting him mm -hmm. to play. Um, but they still and when they uninvited him to play, they actually they still wanted him to come to the game to sit, mm -hmm. to, you know, as one of the stars to, for being there. And he said he said, y'all know damn well y'all lying. And um Suge Knight <laughs> has a podcast called Collect Call. I thought that was so dope. <laughs> I think it's so dope. I never knew they had a podcast. And I think <laughs> Collect Call is just so witty because he in jail. And this is what he said. <laughs> play number four. You can have a man that part of that secret society, they going to give him an award. The Impact Award. The motherfucker that beat up more than anybody. This man will get an award for beating up women. Chris Brown is stripped from his crown and not saying... It was right by him and Rihanna got into it and they had a fight or he beat her up. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is this. He had a fight with one woman or he beat up one woman and they still casting stones at him. 
They don't let them come perform. They don't let them pretty much win awards. But you can have an impact award with Andre. And so this was him defending Chris Brown. And, um, yeah, he was actually talking about uh, Dr. Dre when he said that. Um, but, like, we were just talking about off air. Like, what, what do we think Chris Brown needs to do? Like, what could he do to, I guess, be... Is what's the word? Relinquished? Is forgiven? that the word? Forgiven? Or? Forgiven or whatever, you know, of of like what he's done. Now, I, it was a lot of uh, comments swarming around like, no, he didn't just beat up one woman and he, you know, now he's a blood, he's a gang member and all that type of stuff. Um, but I just still feel like a lot what they're talking about, they're mainly talking about everybody just mainly talking about this situation with Rihanna that happened back in like 2011 or something like that. I 2009. I, 2009? Mm-hmm. Okay. But it was no... Nobody can grow from those things. Those people make mistakes. People grow from them. Like, it's no... It's no... People I mean, you can, can't you, you, you change. Can, yeah, I mean, you can do all of that. Like, you can grow, you can evolve. But, I yeah. mean, you know, these companies still... That's that's on them. If they choose not to deal with you, they choose not to deal with you. But it should be everybody, right? Like it, I think it should be everybody. If if we got one person here that's I suffering mean, for domestic violence or it whatever, it is sad. He was what nineteen years old. Yeah. Could, could you imagine it, the things that we did at nineteen? Yeah. That yeah. we got in trouble for that that held us down to when we was in you know our thirties or forties yeah. or whatever it may be. Like that's why I say, truth be told, who cares what man thinks? Like you know, he's gone through the legal process. You know, as yeah. long as you made peace with God, as long as you made peace with yourself, and hopefully the people you know who you potentially hurt, it doesn't matter what others think. And even if you haven't made peace with the people you hurt, as long as you ask forgiveness, ask for forgiveness, and you feel God has given you that, that's really all that matters, and that's all you can hope for. Yeah. You know? But it just doesn't stop. Like it just wasn't this. It was remember when he was supposed to play uh, the tribute, do the Michael Jackson the tribute. tribute. They wouldn't the let him awards. do the tribute. They wouldn't I thought let they him. did do it. No, they no. wouldn't let him do and it. And this is the thing. They're saying they're inviting him to these places. They're uh-huh. telling him that he can, and then they're turning. Turning around saying that he can't. And see, I wonder if what the NBA did was personal to Chris Brown or is the people who are over that portion of All-Star events, if they're just slack. Because I saw Gilly, you know, Gilly was on with Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson and he was saying that basically the same thing happened to him as well. They told mm-hmm. him he was playing. Mm-hmm. And the game. They told him he was mm-hmm. in the game. The game but then yeah. when the lineup came out, he wasn't in mm-hmm. it. And yeah. nobody called him to tell him otherwise. Yeah. So I just wonder if they're just slack. So he showed up with a jersey on and everything? Like, no, yeah. no. Oh, I guess they, he, he said they was talking to his assistant and basically uh, told okay. him he was, he was going to be in it. But then when they announced, you know, who oh, was playing. Oh, he saw that his name wasn't exactly. on the line. But, but wow. it also could be like you said. It could be like whoever's booking these acts or booking these acts. And then when it gets to legal, mm-hmm. legal's like, nah, 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 we're not doing that. Maybe. You mm-hmm. know, or, or whoever's, you know, high yeah. exec is like, nah, 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 we're not doing yeah. that. That could happen as well. But that's let's discuss it next hour. 800-585-1051. We were talking Chris Brown. Of course, he was supposed to uh, be playing in a celebrity game. And in the last minute, they said no. So is that fair? Do we sh- Should we forgive him? Has he evolved? Let's discuss next hour. 800-585-1051. And when we come back, we got front page news. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. What's up, Tiz? What's going on, DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. Hey, girl. Mm-hmm. Let's jump right into it. Let's talk about the suspect who uh, fatally shot two officers. Yeah, an update on that story. Now, the man who fatally shot two Minnesota police officers and a first responder over the weekend, he was actually prohibited from owning a firearm. Let's go to NBC to break down what happened in that shooting. I'll give you some more information on the other side. Outside the Burnsville, Minnesota police station, balloons, flowers, and embraces as this community mourns the three first responders killed early Sunday. They put their lives on the line every day for us. Every Everybody is hurting right now. Police officers Paul Elmstrand, Matthew Ruge, both 27, and 40-year-old firefighter paramedic Adam Finseth were shot while responding to a domestic violence incident. We are heartbroken. Tonight, the county medical examiner confirming the man responsible for their deaths is 38-year-old Shannon Cortez Gooden. Police say it began at 1.50 Sunday morning with the 911 call reporting a man was armed and barricaded inside a home. Officers arrived and began negotiating with him, later learning there were seven children inside, ages 2 to 15. Yes, a really unfortunate story with that, especially with those children inside. But uh, the thing, the key to this is, guys, you know, we always talk about these shootings and if they were allowed to have a gun or not. And in this particular case, uh, Shannon Gooding, he was permitted by state law from possessing a firearm after he was convicted of second degree assault in 2007. And what's even further interesting about this story in 2020, his attorney attempted to reverse that. He called it a very harsh ban, arguing that uh, it was good. He had good cause to do so and that he was not a dangerous 
criminal or a potential risk to the community. So we find that to not be true, uh, according to uh, what happened this weekend. So, again, unfortunate those, that those first responders uh, lost their life. In fact, one uh, was responding. He was actually uh, administering first aid when he was shot uh, as well uh, and killed. So very unfortunate incident that happened with that. Yeah, rest in peace to those they're police officers, right? Two officers, one first responder. Yep. Yeah, rest in peace to those police officers and that first responder. I mean, that is what so many officers, you know, fear, right, getting killed in the line of duty. And, you know, the same way we don't want to see innocent civilians, you know, getting getting killed j just randomly, you know, doing routine things. You don't want to see that happen to police officers either. So yeah. rest in peace to mm -hmm. uh, those two officers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it always goes to, you know, they talk about the firearm laws and, 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 and people owning firearms. But like I always said, it, the criminals don't care about the firearm laws regardless. If no. they want a firearm, they're going to buy a firearm. So a lot of times these laws and, and these things that they do are for people that's trying to protect themselves. But the criminal don't care about your law. The criminal don't care about how much time they're going to get. If they want to commit a crime or do something like this, they're going to take a firearm. He wasn't permitted to have a firearm, and he got one anyway. Well, they about to bury that man under the jail. Mm -hmm. I mean... Well, no, he, pa he passed away. No, he oh, passed he away. Yes. yes oh, sir. okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. What, he killed himself or... They killed him? He was shot. At, it was a, I, and I don't want to um, give misinformation, but because it was a shootout, from what I'm reading from NBC, it doesn't say what bullet came from where the story is still developing, gotcha. but it was a shootout, so we don't know if it was maybe he's shooting at them or them shooting at him or vice versa, but they did not confirm that. I'm assuming um, it obviously came, you know, probably from them shooting at him, mm. um, but yeah, he passed away. Jesus, those seven children, though. Yeah. Mm. Now, now let's jump right into to Trump. Yeah, I want to give you an update uh, over President. We obviously were all for President's Day. want to give you an update on former President Donald Trump. Uh, on Friday, he was found liable for conspiring to manipulate his net worth and ordering him to pay a penalty of nearly $355 million plus interest. Let's go to CBS for the report. The former president ordered to pay more than $350 million and banned from running a business in New York or applying for loans in the state for three years. His two sons each fined $4 million and barred from doing business in New York for two years, thrusting the leadership of the family company into peril. Be prohibited from doing business in your, your home state or the state where you have so many properties and so many business activities it is an absolutely devastating sanction. But is it though? I mean, mean? his sons can't run it, but he has daughters. I'm sure he has other, you know, uh, people on his team that can run it. Is is it that bad? Bro, he got a $354 million fine. I'm talking about the, the fact that he's running the thing. <laughs> yes. But he's going to appeal man, the fine. Man, them businesses, man. But he's going to appeal a $350,000 fine. And that's on top of what? Fine. That's on top of the other? The, what was it? What, how much he had to pay that woman? And let's let's deal with this appeal though because you mentioned he's going to appeal it which doesn't matter so before he mm -hmm. can appeal the verdict trump will still have to post a bond or pledge assets equal to the verdict plus nine percent of a post-judgment interest so there's a lot of conversation like oh well, he'll just appeal it yeah well you still got to put that money up though because mm -hmm. they want to make sure that in case that appeal doesn't go through that the state uh gets their money there's also some conversation charlamagne about oh well you know he'll just get bankruptcy so let me just address that quickly um he's going in, in order let me go back to the appeal in order to appeal appeal he'll also have to pay a non-refundable fee of about 18 million dollars just to obtain the bond Jeez. uh he have to put up yes yeah, so he have to put up some collateral and to address the bankruptcy question uh that trump organization even if it declares bankruptcy the organization he still would have to pay that fee now if he personally declares bankruptcy then the judge could possibly pause it but they said that's unlikely to happen as well so to answer your question uh charlemagne uh 355 million penalty comes from this uh but then also you're talking about the 88 million uh that is owed to e Jean carroll from another case yeah he's uh, over, so now that's he's over yeah. a half a billion in legal debt that's yeah. correct over at, a half best. A billion in legal debt. and what is what at is trump best. worth what, what what do they say his net worth is what is he worth do we know um let me look it up because it did it did say on here about his net worth but i don't think it's hey he ain't got a half a billion dollars <laughs> lying around to pay no legal debt <laughs> right. that much i know right. okay i'm right. telling you something donald trump might be the toughest white man that ever lived Mm. Because most white men would have killed themselves a long time ago if they mm. was in this kind of debt. I mean, they'd have been jumping off buildings, jumping off bridges, goggling with bullets. They would have been, like, think about how white people on Wall Street just kill themselves when they get this kind of debt. This man got a half a billion dollars in debt, and he out here selling sneakers. <laughs> yeah, he's selling sneakers. That's so <laughs> $399. God, Go sneakers. Yeah, them sneakers are reselling for, i seen somewhere $8,000 on some of them sites. Savage, man. Yeah. Oh, did right. that. And that is front page. Oh, and, and that guy, he did kill himself. The guy we were talking about earlier. The, the, uh, yeah, his name, the shooter. His, yeah, his name was Shannon, okay, they confirmed Shannon Gooden. Yeah, he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you for that update. I know NBC didn't say who, and I don't want to 
put that out there. So thank you, Charlamagne, for that update. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, Tez. And thank make sure you, you follow at Teslin Figaro on all social media platforms. And subscribe to Teslin Figaro's podcast, the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast on the Black Flag iHeartRadio podcast network. All right. 800-585-1051. We're discussing Chris Brown. If you haven't heard, he was supposed to play in a celebrity basketball game over the weekend for All-Star. But last minute, they pulled it. Um, and he's saying enough's enough. Pretty much F y'all. Like... This was I was 19 years old when I got into the incident, and it just won't go away. So we're asking 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts? You know, Chris Brown is, what, 35, 36 years old now? Yeah. This happened when he was 19. He was dating Rihanna in 2008. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's as cut and dry as everybody trying to make it out to be. It, 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 it never is, because these companies can reserve the right to not do business with you. And we know they're not consistent. We know they're all contradictions. We know they're hypocrites. We know everyone doesn't get treated the same. Mm-hmm. And truthfully, there's nothing anybody can do about it. These companies say, "Hey, man, we don't want Chris Brown," then they don't want Chris Brown. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what we want. But let's discuss when we come back. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Chris Brown. Now, during Jess with the Mess, he was, she was talking about Chris Brown and the fact that the NBA invited him to play at the Celebrity Game and mm-hmm. then uninvited him. So we're asking 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts? Jess. I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. Don't and all right. If you if these these corporations, Charlemagne is right. They they have the right to say who they don't want to deal with. Well, they do want to deal with for their past or whatever. But don't invite me and then uninvite me. Don't do that. It had same thing happened with the tribute. Same thing happened with this game. And I just think it's bad. It's horrible. I, I yeah. just feel like with the NBA, the NBA has a lot of uh, I guess to do this because there's so many players in the NBA yeah. that have assault charges, sexual assault charges, yeah. and. and no, no, I don't know something. about that now. The NBA ain't not like the NFL. The NBA definitely has some people who got some DV charges, but not like the NFL. The NBA usually but they, they, you. But they do have some, but they have some major existing. players that have had sexual assault charges. Yeah. Like who? Oh, come on, come on, come on. This ain't the show for that. No, go ahead. <laughs> Who? Who? I'm talking about right now. Oh no, no, not right now. Oh, but, 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 oh no, I don't know about right now. Oh, okay, I'm talking okay, about in okay. the past. They have had players who had mm-hmm. sexual assault charges and still play. Yeah, but those people also went through the legal system, though. Like they went through the legal system. Like they 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 had their due process in court, and so they got dealt with in a court of law. But they still played in the league. And not what, a problem. What what is going on? They did play. They did. They did play in the league. But we're not going to sit here and act like. Um, the NBA didn't back away from them. Let's be, you're, you're talking about Kobe Bryant. Let's be honest. Oh, there's a host of them. Well, because 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 the reality is the league should have been Kobe's. Like Kobe should have been the face of the league. There was a there was a a, a plan to not make Kobe the face of the league, and that's when they started putting all the energy on LeBron James. And this is and Kobe was still at the top of his game, winning two championships and everything. But. I don't know how we even got on this subject. What I got? I was just saying. Yeah, you're you. You got I on this subject. You jumped on there and <laughs> said like who? If you never said like who, then we wouldn't be here. Well, I All I said that. is there was players in the league that have been accused of sexual assault in the league. We still see them in the league. So yeah, but, the fact that Chris Brown did something at the age of 19. This yeah. was a, he's a kid at mm-hmm. 19. Can we agree? He was mm-hmm. a teenager. Yes, very yeah, much. He made mistakes. He effed up. He apologized. He said he was sorry. Mm-hmm. But the fact that how old is Chris now? 30 something years old? 35, yeah, 36 35, years old? Yeah. And one of the best musicians out there, but will never get his flowers because of this. And it keeps coming up. He couldn't yeah. do the Michael Jackson tribute. He, could, he couldn't play after they invited him. Now, if they didn't mm-hmm. invite him, then I would understand. But it seems like it's, it's over and over and over again, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, these companies can reserve the right to not do business with you. Um, we know they're not consistent. We know that they're all contradictions. We know they're hypocrites. We know everyone doesn't get treated the same. And truthfully, I don't. I, th- there's nothing anybody can do about it. You don't think it's wrong? I don't know if it's necessarily wrong if I'm personally making a choice to not deal with someone. I, I can't. I can't say. I don't know if wrong is the right word because even when mm-hmm. you talk about players, these players impact their bottom line more than a Chris Brown does. These players are part of the league. They're mm-hmm. part of a team. So, of course, they're going to get more leniency and more grace than somebody who they just bringing in to, you know... It's a celebrity game, though. Yeah, but I'm saying that's only one time. I'm not going to ruin my whole brand and my whole game, you know, for one person. But also, too, like I said earlier, I wonder if the NBA, if that was personal to Chris Brown, mm-hmm. are the people who just running that kind of stuff slack? 
Because I told y'all, Gilly said the same thing. Gilly said they told him he was playing in the game. Well, I don't think we can bring up Gilly. Gilly is not Chris <laughs> Brown. So this I'm is just like... saying, it. Gilly, Gilly, t- they, Gilly said they told him he was playing in the game. And then when the, it got announced who was in the game, he wasn't in it. So maybe these people just slack. Because that is slack to email somebody and tell them, hey, you you on. But then email them back and tell them, hey, no, you're not. Yeah. That's just unprofessional. Correct. Yeah. So maybe these people that are running this portion are just unprofessional. I don't know if it's something necessarily personal against Chris Brown. I do believe so. But let's go hmm. to the phone line. We have Crystal on the line. Crystal, good morning. Hello. Hey, good Hi, morning, Crystal. Crystal. I was calling because I'm really tired of Chris Brown slander. To be honest... If Dr. Dre beat Mitchell A, he got to perform at Super Bowl. He got to do all this stuff, all these endorsement deals. Chris Brown beats up Rihanna, and it's like he's black ball forever. And it's, it's not fair. It's, it's Everybody too, knows. That no, I agree with you. It's two different organizations, though. You know, the Super Bowl is, is ran by the NFL, and, of course, the NBA is totally two different organizations. But, I, yeah, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's ridiculous, though, because he keeps getting blocked by everything. And everybody everybody knows who they want to perform. Yeah. And even with the NBA, and my, I still think it was the sponsor that did that. But they should just leave him alone. But Ruffles, They're going to keep doing that to him. Ruffles said we have nothing to do with yeah, picking the players. Ruffles said it wasn't us. And Chris said Ruffles is lying. But I, I believe that. I know Ruffles don't have nothing to do with picking the players. No. Mm. Like, what would, what, why would, hey, Ruffles, who y'all want to play? The <laughs> That's not how that works. Yeah, but the thing is, like you just said. If it, right, right. <laughs> but the thing <laughs> is, when, when, it, when it got to them who was playing, they were like, okay, we don't want to be associated with a Chris Brown. That is very well, much they said possible. That's not true. Ruffles said that's not true. Ruffles said that never happened. Ruffles, okay. said, Ruffles said we had nothing to do with it. Okay. And, and they would be able to prove that if Ruffles was, if Ruffles was the one that'd be like, we don't want to spo- give sponsorship money if it was because of that. Okay. So I, don't, I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm with you. I don't, I don't think Ruffles. Okay. Went that far. Ruffles Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey, what's up, Clay? Talk to us. What's your thought? Okay, uh, so my thoughts is uh, he was he was actually 17 at the time. So I mean. You know, being 17, you know, everybody, everybody made mistakes. So I just feel like um, they should, I ain't saying they should overlook it, but I mean, he was, he was a minor. So let's, uh, you know, that don't take away the fact that he's, he's super talented. Right. Yeah. And, 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 to, and, and we were talking about players, you know, also Carl Malone, mm. right? Carl Malone, 20 year old, he impregnated a 13 year old girl. Uh, he, he has statues. His, yeah, his but, jersey but, thing. But, but once again, Carl Malone played for the Utah Jazz. He was an NBA player, meaning he's he affects the bottom line of the NBA more than one person in a celebrity game. If you're an owner of a team and you're willing to take whatever heat comes with that, or you're the commissioner of the organization and you're you're willing to deal with whatever heat comes with that. You'll do that over a player. You're not going to do that over somebody in a celebrity office. But that don't sound crazy that we're not going to let you play because it's something you did at 19, but we're going to you know, give you your flowers, have a statue of you, retire your jersey, mm-hmm. add you to the 75th, uh, the 75 uh, basketball team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but these are all different people making these decisions. You're thinking very small today. No, I'm not. I'm thinking broad. <laughs> oh like, y'all God. are thinking very small because y'all no. acting like it's one person making all these decisions for all of these players. Well, the NBA no, is the one that's the Utah the Jazz has to choose to build a statue no, of Carl Malone. The yeah. Utah Jazz have to choose to retire his jersey and honor him in that way. What are we talking about? <laughs> we're talking about Chris Brown keep being dubbed and snubbed. That's what we're talking about. I would, I would have to, I would have to know that that is exactly the reason why he got dubbed, mm-hmm. and I would have to. I would want to know from whoever dubbed him why. Why, why are the reasons? Eight hundred. Mm-hmm. That's what I would want to know. I think we're just making a lot of assumptions. Right five eight five one zero five one. Let's discuss this. The breakfast slow. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's topic time. Call eight hundred five eight five one zero five one to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Chris Brown. Uh, during Jess with the mess, he uh, reportedly that he was supposed to play in a celebrity game, but then was uninvited. Uh, he doesn't know why. I guess nobody under- really no- understands why. And we can only assume the reason why. And we're just asking you a question. And what I just want to throw it out there once again. Yes. Chris Brown is not the only person that the NBA did that to this year. So I'm wondering once again. Is this something personal to Chris Brown? Are all these are all well, these so people just too. slack? He, he, he's talking about Gilly. Gilly. He's talking about Gilly from Million Dollars Worth of Game. <laughs> and Gilly is somebody who I would want to see in there. I don't care. Listen, ain't none of y'all better than Ball like than Gilly. 
celebrity wise. Uh, okay. Chris Gilly can ball. Chris can ball. Gilly will watch Chris Brown. Oh, you stop it. Gilly will watch. So you, you, you don't be watching Gilly. I be watching no, Gilly. No, 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 yes, no, no, no. I do. I Gilly, watch Gilly. Do you watch and, Chris? And by, the way, by the way, Gilly has been the MVP of the Big Three uh, celebrity tournament two years in a row. Have you seen Chris Brown play? Have so you that's seen what Gilly? Gilly? I watched this Gilly play. about? Gilly? You want Gilly now? Yes. This, Gilly uh, can ball. Okay, pause. Gilly can play. All right, yes, you want Gilly and he got balls. All right, good. Not <laughs> all. I enjoy watching Gilly play. I don't, like, no uh, disrespect to Chris. I watch Gilly play, but Chris gets busy, too. Chris gets busy. Like, Gilly period. will watch Chris. you never even seen Chris play? Yes, I have. No, no, yeah, but I've seen Gilly play a lot more. He said, no, but I have seen yeah, play a lot yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gilly no. jumper is is uh, amazing. So okay, is Chris's. Well, no. Either way, he's no. not so in is the NBA. So Callis. jumper's amazing, too. Callis who? Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, Calvin who's this? Who? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> this is Quentin from Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, Quentin, what's, what's your that? thoughts? What's going on? Man, I feel like, man, they doing Chris Brown like they do every other black man in the world. You can't leave this world free. They trying to keep that on him so whenever he do get old and old and gray, they going to always bring it up like they do Michael Jackson and everybody else. That's right. I think we need to make sure that this is why oh Chris God. Brown wasn't here. I'm serious. I think we might all be jumping to some clu- some conclusions here. Well, how do you explain the, the Michael Jackson tribute that they asked him to do, and then he was like, nah, you can't well, do it Well, that was fresh. That was it. I, I get that. Cause that that was, wasn't that fresh? That was yes, like, it was. How nah, long ago was, nah, that was Like, that was literally last year. No, that was it wasn't. 2020. No, yeah, it was no, like it wasn't. 2022, 2023. Why? And I remember him doing a Michael Jackson tribute at the BET Awards. Which one y'all talking about? No, we ain't talking about BET, baby. We talking about, like, this was, was at one of the biggest awards. Yeah, he was supposed to perform oh, maybe at, two years ago. I think 2022. Yeah, what year was that? Uh, That's a couple years ago. He was like he had higher people. He had choreography he started, down. He started training were, and all that. Yeah, yeah. started oh, that was, training. Twenty twenty two. Thank you very much. I'm a Chris Brown fan. <laughs> so yes, I know that. So and then they said no, you can't do it. It's like no, and it's the same thing that just happened at the All Star. But here's the thing. Even with that, I'm looking at it now. It says a rep for Dick Clark Productions, which produces the show. Told Puck, live shows change all the time. It's the nature of this business. Unfortunately, this element of the AMAs no. didn't come together as we couldn't align on the performance to no fault of Chris Brown. Absolutely not. That is a hunk of BS, and we know it. And also, the tribute was towards Michael Jackson. Yes, and who they were saying, they were <laughs> saying, no, we will not have somebody who represents domestic violence uh, give a tribute to a pedophile. That's alleged what I saw. Alleged pedophile. Alleged pedophile, alleged, alleged, alleged. But that's what they <laughs> so say. So why do the tribute to Michael then? Oh, my God. And I'm not, by the way, I'm a person that thinks Michael is completely innocent. But yes. why, why do the tribute to Michael? Because that's what we love. What are you talking about? I'm just, I'm just saying it don't make any sense. If they were going to tell Chris he can't perform in a tribute to Michael Jackson, why would they be doing the tribute to Michael? Then, but why not telling him beforehand after he right. went through training, after he got a Y'all missing what I'm saying. After been practicing. Why even have... Why would you even be doing a why tribute to me? Michael why if you were me? going to stand Why on... call me and make me practice and tell me I got the are job? You, are and you listening to me? what I'm saying? Are you though? listening to me? Yes. Don't but, call me. Listen to what I'm saying. Right. If they were against Chris Brown, why would they be doing a tribute to Michael Jackson, who's also been accused of things? So clearly, I believe them when they say to no fall to Chris Brown, because they still did a tribute to somebody who's been accused of heinous things. So what you you wanted to see Gilly do the, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Michael Jackson tribute? Uh, uh, I'm about. simply saying that I don't know if all of this is uh, if all of this should be attributed to things that people have been accused of. I don't know. Hello, who's mm-hmm. this? Hi. Good morning, it's Wendy. How are you? Hey, Wendy. Good, good morning. How you Talking feel? Chris Brown. What's your thoughts? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe I'm on. Real quickly, I know you have a lot of people to get to. I want to um, pray to God for all of you guys in the Breakfast Club. I appreciate you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Um, Charlamagne, thank you for your mental health expo. I took my son last year, and I need someone to help me with regard to um, getting a the therapist for myself and my family, but we'll talk about that afterwards, hopefully. So, anyway, with regard to Chris Brown, I'm a mother, single mother of three kids, and they're putting him through enough. I spent this entire weekend listening to Chris Brown music because he is such a talented person singing, dancing, and acting. And they're acting like this guy took out, I mean, was a, was a serial killer or something. He did something wrong. He apologized. He served penance. Rihanna has moved on. She's not dwelling on it. Why is everybody else? Give the men his flowers now because they're going to be the ones on the bandwagon. God forbid anything happens to him. Oh, Chris Brown was a wonderful performer. Here's his posthumous award or whatever. He needs to get over it. And leave this man alone. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. And, and hold on. So, so I'll make help you out with the information you need, too, okay? Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Take okay. care. All right. Take care of your baby, too. Just thank you. Uh, so, what's the moral of the story, guys? I think we should make sure that this is even the reason why the NBA or whoever decided. <laughs> well, we got to bring Chris Brown up here. Yeah. That's the only way. Chris is always welcome. Or, or do you not want him to come up here? Do you want Gilly to come up here? 
Nah, Chris, 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 is, Chris is definitely welcome up here. Okay, all right. But I just, I just, like I said, I just wonder if what the NBA did was personal to Chris Brown, because just like the AMA, the AMA says it was not personal to Chris Brown. They just mm. switched up things in, in their live. Yeah. Performance, but the, the the problem with the the celebrity game is Chris Brown would have been probably one of the biggest celebrities playing. Yeah, right? yeah. can we have say that? Can we can uh, we all agree to that? Yes, we. Yeah, yes. I, mean, I don't remember celebrity. who all was in it, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, saw, I know Michael Parsons was in it, Kyson and not. Yeah, who else was in it? I don't even remember who else was in it. That's exactly, it. just Chris Brown. But that's that's my point. He would have been one yeah. of the biggest celebrities playing, and I'm sure it would have people would have loved to see Chris play. Gilly would have won the MVP. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> y'all playing with Gilly? I don't get no playing with Gilly. Gilly can play. Gilly can play. Play like if it, this was another life, Gilly would have been in the NBA or something. Gilly, Gilly gets busy. Gilly is really, really. Gilly good. must be coming over to Black Effect or something because this no, man is hyping not. him up real, real, just, real hard. I just like he's a person. Like if you watch him on Instagram, no, Gilly, Gilly, Gilly he gets can busy. really ball. Yeah, Gilly and so gets busy. I was actually like I said, he won the MVP of the Big Three celebrity game the last couple of years. So I always be thinking, damn, why Gilly's not in the NBA game? So when I mm-hmm. saw him on with Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson explaining it this week, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And nice. then, then especially with, you know, with the celebrity game, I see a lot of people on the celebrity games in the past, I would say, 10 years that are trash. That shouldn't be there. Right, and right. the celebrity is not big enough to even be part of the game. Mm-hmm. I'm from the era where, you know, the celebrity game was the major celebrity. Yep. like your... Kevin Hart used to play all the time in the celebrity oh, wow. game. Yeah, so... Uh, anyway, we got Jess with the mess coming up. Yes, we do. Oh. All right, we'll be back. What that mean? You don't have nothing planned? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to get into Benzino, but I don't want nobody to be laughing at because when I said we're going to cover Benzino getting emotional on Drink Champs, everybody was laughing, and that's not laugh. funny. So, yeah, Benzino, we're going to get into his mental health. All right, we'll talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Do you guys watch... Uh, the Netflix series Love on the Spectrum. That's about uh, no. the kids with Down syndrome who found love. That like they're oh dating God, no. and, and finding love. But no, it's, I heard about it. It's, it's really. Is it sad? No, no. It's, oh, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's them finding okay. love and, and going through the process of finding love. And some of them are like so real. Like one, there was a, a speed dating and, you know, he's writing, no, don't want to be with her mm-hmm. in front of her. But he doesn't understand oh. that she can actually see it. So he's like, nope, don't want to be with her. Nope. Not. Like, but, oh, my So they're actually learning about love. There was one where he was like, well, you know, he needed a coat. So he was like, you know, what kind of animals do you like? He was like, well, I like dogs, cats. Uh-huh. I like rhinos. I like uh-huh. He starts going through all the animals. And lady was like, well, you're supposed to ask me back. He was like, oh, okay. Uh, so he was like, like what? Well, coats? It, no animals so he's talking oh, okay, about okay. all the animals mm-hmm. that he likes so he went rhinos dogs cats mm-hmm. he went through mm-hmm. tigers uh, this that and the other uh-huh. why but am I he, supposed to ask you back <laughs> he's like so what you're supposed to ask well, what animals do you like uh-huh. why you ask me I don't care what animals you like oh my god see that's why you would be single <laughs> right there yeah that's why crazy would he, why, why does, he have, does he have to ask that oh, back cause it's dating god. you're on a date you're, dating, you're supposed to ask somebody dating. what you like back you, yeah. you just don't you get that sounds like someone. some small talk. That sounds like we ain't even supposed to be on this date. If you ask me what animals I like. It's love on the spectrum. 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 I don't care. They're they still making small talk. <laughs> okay. Oh they ain't got God. nothing else to talk See, about. See this? You shouldn't have brought this up. He need to watch They don't got nothing blind. else to talk about. That's what kind of animals you like? Come it's, on, man. It's love it's on the, the spectrum. spectrum. Look, get to my news because y'all cutting into you cutting into the spectrum. The news is real. The news is real. The news is real. The news is real. The news is is going to bring you numbers. Just the mess. The news is real. The news is real. The news is real. The news is real. The news going to call up here like, uh. All right. Beyonce reveals that she has psoriasis, y'all. So, during her interview with Essence, Beyonce spoke on the beautiful memories that she has that are attached to her hair. And she uh, she recalled those moments where she said that it's very important to her because, you know, she has her um, her hairline that is uh, coming out, you know, her hair care line and everything. She said, I have many beautiful memories attached to my hair. The relationship we have with our hair is such a deeply personal journey. From spending my childhood in my mother's salon to my father applying oil on my scalp to treat my psoriasis, these moments have been sacred to me. She spoke with Essence to promote her hair care line. It's called Secret. Um, uh, C-E-C-R-E-D, y'all. Uh, which launches today, actually. So, yes, go get that. Um, but I, what I think uh, is amazing about this is that we never really hear anything personal about Beyonce. You know, especially like we used to. She used to do interviews. She used to talk to us. Now she doesn't. And um, and <laughs> and now that she revealed, like, something so regular and so human that women do experience, people, period, mm-hmm. experience, I think this actually... Um, I thought like this was really nice for her because I know a lot of people with psoriasis, you know what I mean? And this make her this makes her look like a little bit more human and relatable. 
or whatever. So I think that's really good. And y'all can't speak because y'all ain't speaking on enough because y'all don't have psoriasis. But yeah, it, it's actually, it makes her look like very much for I know what psoriasis is. Spell it. I don't know how to spell it. I know it's all about it. <laughs> but uh, okay. But she probably has scalp psoriasis. Scalp psoriasis. Yeah, is what yeah she scalp has. psoriasis. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. that's what. Yeah, because that that goes with hair. So yeah, yeah. yeah. so scalp psoriasis. Right. It mm-hmm. wouldn't be anywhere else. But um, Mace responds to Shannon Sharp. So Cam and Mace commented on uh, Shannon Sharp's beef with Mike Epps during an episode of It Is What It Is. Play number one. <laughs> Is too grown to be wrestling. Y'all <laughs> doing all this curling. <laughs> Go ahead if you want. <laughs> yeah, I see you doing your dips and all that. <laughs> thing he on. He did 84 pull-ups. <laughs> Go ahead if you want. <laughs> so obviously they were joking and playing. I mean, that's right. what if y'all watch their show, y'all listen to their show, y'all know that's what they do. Well, to a certain play extent. Things. To a certain extent. But yeah. this was honestly like a joke or whatever, Correct. right? Uh, then Shannon Sharp responded to them on the nightcap of Ocho Cinco. There's this pastor. I guess now he a gangster pastor. Uh, uh, now all of a sudden, I mean, he he going to do so much. He need to sit his little roly-poly ass down. But roly this is what poly. I do. This is what I, this is what I'm saying. I have to talk to my sister. I ain't finna beef with nobody else. So you it's say Black that, History and then Month, you guys. say, I know. You <laughs> say that, and then you say, <laughs> after talking to my sister, I ain't gonna be for nobody else. So Mace addressed Shannon Sharp's response on the most recent episode of It Is What It Is. If you are for black people, this is not the way to carry yourself. You wanted to be tough with Mike Epps, and, and you settled quicker than Diddy and Cassie. Call yourself coming at me. You showed poise, respect for Skip Bayless. Why are you so aggressive anytime somebody black say something? The man said, put your glasses on, and you put your glasses back on. <laughs> fantastic response, Beth. I, 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 that's I really, a fantastic response. I definitely would say that. But uh, Shannon Sharp got to understand, you know, you're doing these, you know, these podcasts that that obviously they're going viral. Mm-hmm. Your show has become like like such a bigger success than it ever was because of the, the interviews and the people that you're sitting down with. Everybody comes spilling their tea, and you can't expect not to be talked about. Like the same Correct. way with you know Mike Epps, although. I, I was a little on Shannon's side with with the whole gay thing, but I mean, again, <clears throat> again, these are jokes, and I I really thought it was harmless what uh, Mason Cameron did on the show. I mean, but he just got to stop responding to everything. Don't respond yeah. to everything. Yeah, why everybody coming at Shannon though? Like I, I like I, I like I understand that he's done a couple of interviews that have been considered messy, mm-hmm. the Cat Williams and mm-hmm. Monique one, but why is that a reflection of him? Why but are I, people coming at him? But I think it's been jokes. Well, like Mason, yeah, Mason, and Mason Cam was doing jokes. Yeah, he just gets offended. Well, well until somebody Diesel runs up on you, and we you just gotta, get, you know, it's, it's okay, okay, okay. yeah. But okay. But, it, but it's been all jokes, yeah. and, I, and I think yeah. Shannon Sharp has to understand that they're gonna have jokes regardless. And that that shows Everybody. a sign of, of of him doing well. That is, yeah. the stuff is going viral, and and this stuff is part of the culture. But they, it's they only have jokes February. All day. Cat Williams was what December, right? <laughs> Cat was at the end of December, early yeah, January. It's yeah. only February. Why That's everybody right. got smoke with Shannon now? And it's only February. Well, he's gonna have to put his big boy pants on and put them glasses back on, so he, all, he had tough skin because there's gonna right. be a lot more people coming. Because Shannon's right. responding. That's the reason why. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and yep, and they're gonna keep picking on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Benzino opens up about beef with Eminem on a recent interview with Drink Champs. They got him drunk as a skunk, and uh, this is what he said. But none against Eminem. They can rap. But I care about us more. I don't want to go through. I don't want to talk about it no more. I don't want to, for 22 years. Every time I do an interview, they ask me about Eminem. The f- you want me to do? Come on, man. My daughter came into the industry figuring that hey, I gotta be cool with Eminem because everybody's against my dad. You think this f- is f- cool? Nah, oh, man. Ooh, we're failing as a people. I don't hate Eminem. I don't know him to hate him. I don't hate white people. I'm tired of this <laughs> shit, man. It's just too much. I don't want to be the bad guy. Oh, I man. like when people get that drunk. Uh, you don't? I do. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when that alcohol yeah. get a hold of your soul. You just yeah. start spilling your guts. You give your life to the Lord in that yeah. moment. Yeah. I respect it. Yeah, yeah. And and, <laughs> and their beef was over 20 years ago. Uh Benzino and it and Eminem. And they did diss tracks uh, a couple weeks ago, back and forth or whatever. But I just feel like they get you drunk on this show and then who's the other host is not Noriega but it's another guy sitting there FN FN FN. he was like he after uh, Benzino went on for a while he was like um 
All right, come on, come on. You're 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 more than this. Like, don't you know? After y'all gave this man twenty two shots of cognac <laughs> and decided to bring up his enemy, yeah, you, you're more than this. You're more than this. But also, I saw that he just tired of the internet and tired of it. Like, just they he, play with Benzino's name a lot, and that's do. and that's the horrible thing. Whatever life. he said in that moment. Is what he means. Is what he meant. Yeah. So he don't hate white people. No, he don't. And he don't that. have a problem with Eminem like yeah. that. Okay, yeah. you gotta. That's it. Yeah, I, I feel Benzino. They play on Benzino's name a lot. A let's, lot. Let's, let's, yeah. let's be honest. Benzino was one of the people that created the Source magazine, mm-hmm. which was an institution that helped so many different artists. They were doing so well at so uh, at one point, and people just play with him when it comes to it. But yeah. they stay coming for Benzino's neck. They did. absolutely. That was a good one for his neck. No, they do. They always come. You know what I mean. Oh they my always god! Coming at him. You sh- they come. All right, we'll just say coming at him because you know he ain't no neck. Oh my Shut gosh! Up. No, uh, no, 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 no. Salute to Benzino. <laughs> just salute to Benzino. <laughs> salute to Drake Champs. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, no, we gotta lift our icons up. He has a neck, y'all. So and that's, <laughs> and that's just with the mess yeah. for the second hour. Oh my god! I should go kill me. Who you, who you giving your donkey to, man? <laughs> he just said we got to yeah, He's so up. stupid. We need Bethany Franco to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with her, please. All right. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake, wake up. Wake up. You're locked into The Breakfast Club. Uh, uh, Some donkey today just saw themselves. I've been watching Charlotte, man. I was ready for it. Donkey, donkey. donkey. I never heard of a donkey the other day. What is it? Tommy donkey. donkey. Say it again, Charlemagne. I'm a donkey. Yes, you are a donkey. I'll show you how to act a donkey. Everything that Charlemagne is saying is true. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, donkey today. For Tuesday, February 20th, goes to Bethany Frankel. Uh, you know who Bethany Frankel is, right? Entrepreneur, TV personality, Real Housewives in New York. She gets busy. Uh, she had a daytime talk show back in the day. I used to appear on it pretty often. Fun fact, mm. Bethany Frankel is the reason I named my podcast with Andrew Schultz, Brilliant Idiots. True story. I was on her show back in the day when we were first launching the podcast, and she said to me verbatim, you say the smartest, dumbest things I've ever heard. You're like a brilliant idiot. And immediately... The light bulb went off. So thank you for that inspiration, Bethany. But Donkey of the Day does not discriminate. See, if you was listening to Jess with the Mess earlier, then you heard Jess tell a story about the great Kelly Rowland. Jess, can you tell the people what happened with the Godiva chocolate goddess Kelly Rowland? What happened? So she was invited to uh, co-host the Today Show. And mm-hmm. when she got there, she saw that she did not like her green room mm. um, accommodations. And she asked to be moved to a larger green room. And they denied her that access because J-Lo was accompanying the main green room. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, a lot of people had opinions about this situation, and Bethany Frankel was one of them. There is a page six headline that says, Bethany Frankel slams Kelly Rowland for diva expectations over today's show dressing rooms. Can we listen to what Bethany had to say, Rex? Kelly Rowland walked off the set of the Today Show because the dressing room wasn't up to par. She was co-hosting with Hoda, and it wasn't it. I've co-hosted with Hoda, and I've arrived there, and the makeup area that you touch up in is is like grab a croissant and some plastic and pray for the best. And it's just not what that's about. And it's an honor to be there and to sit down with Hoda. And that was not the moment for diva expectations. Bethany, stop. (laughs) Cut it out. Bethany, I would not expect that take from you because you are the same person who had your lawyer send Bravo a litigation hold letter that alleged the company engaged in grotesque and depraved mistreatment of its on-air talent. Bethany also accused Bravo's parent company of plying talent with alcohol while depriving them of food and sleep as well as denying mental health treatment. The moral of the story is Bethany doesn't like to see people mistreating talent. Bethany doesn't like to see people taking advantage of talent. So Bethany, if a talent like Kelly Rowland and felt like they was being mistreated and decided, you know, she was being mistreated to the point she should walk away. Who are you to tell her she's acting like a diva? Okay, we all know you have to teach people how to treat you. So if the Today Show wasn't treating Kelly the way she wanted wanted to be treated, who are we to tell Kelly Rowland, suck it up, buttercup? No, Uh. it is necessary and even vital to set standards for your life. I don't have a problem with Kelly having boundaries. I don't have a problem with Kelly Rowland or any talent walking away from a situation if they aren't being treated correctly. All of these production companies, networks, TV shows, y'all got life effed up in 2024. If you ask these people to take time out of their lives to come co-host your programs, treat them with respect. 
In business, they say the customer is always right. Well, so is the damn talent when it comes to situations like this. If Kelly Rowland felt, if Kelly Rowland felt like they weren't, uh, felt like she wasn't being treated with the respect she deserves, she has every right to walk away. Stop acting like y'all doing talent a favor by putting them on your shows and realize nowadays talent is doing you a favor because most talents don't need these looks in 2024. Okay. You need them to garner attention for your programs in a lot of these cases, not the other way around. Okay. Set boundaries, y'all. All right, everybody out there, don't be afraid to set boundaries. Like the good sister Nadia Tawab Glover says, set boundaries, find peace. What Kelly Rowland did bought her extreme peace, and that's what setting boundaries is all about. Daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves even when we risk disappointing others. I'm sorry if the Today Show and Bethany Frankel were disappointed that Kelly Rowland chose to do what was best for her and her mental and emotional health, but loving yourself will always trump disappointing others. Bethany Frankel, you should be ashamed. Don't call yourself standing up for talent at Bravo, but then tell someone else they should stand down and deal with it. Please get, get Bethany Frankel the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are oh, the donkey mm. of mm. the day. You are the donkey of the day. You know me. It don't take me much to leave because I don't want to be there to begin with. Yeah. Well, you should have gave her the, the Remy Ma one. Are you oh. dumb? Let uh, give let Remy like Ma one. give Bethany Franklin. Yeah, that's fit, that fits her. Hee haw, hee haw! You stupid mother! Are you dumb? Mm. I saw that video. I saw what she did. What she took to online to respond to that uh -huh. Bethany. I didn't know mm -hmm. you were so close to her. Yeah, I'm not but close I, to her. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Close. Oh, she okay. the show. Yeah. Well, I'm not yeah. close to her. Very well, close. I, th I thought that was that was crazy to go online like that. But did y'all uh y'all see my story? She actually looked like Fred Gwynn. Y'all know what that is? Who's Frank Gwynn? Judd from the original Pet Cemetery. Oh. The guy who plays uh, Frankenstein. Oh. She favors him. I, I wonder if they're like his granddaughter or something like that. Okay. But yeah, that's what she looked like to me. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. She right. deserved Donkey of the Day. I didn't like that. Okay. Yeah, me neither. Especially being that, you know, she uh, has sent legal letters to Bravo and accused them of mistreating talent. So yeah. if you're going to stand up for talent in one place, you got to stand up for talent all across the board. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that Donkey of the Day. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, over the weekend, Charlemagne was given. Yes, was low key. Given? He was low key given. Now, 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 explain. You got a call over the weekend, right? Yeah, one of my uh, good, 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 close uh, gay friends had hit me up and was like, "Hey, guess who I saw creeping down in Atlanta at the chair convention?" Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh, who?" And so he was like, <laughs> <laughs> "You would not believe Charlemagne the Good." And you know, mm -hmm. I love him, right? So I, I came up there and I, you know, I spoke to him and he was like, "Oh, hey, how you doing?" And he was he was real, real, real cool and I didn't expect that from him. And um, he was like low key given a little bit, and I was like, "Given what?" He was like, "Now you know Whoa. what I'm talking mm -hmm. about when I say he gay." I was like, oh, okay. Right. Well, for one, he wasn't creeping in the chair convention because he has a 15-year-old. She cheers. And he was with his wife. That means you saw him right next to his wife. He said his wife. I said, yeah. And I, I just knew. I, I wasn't even on FaceTime with him. I knew he flipped his neck when he said his wife. His wife. And I was like, yeah, now this is the thing. Mm -hmm. He even married, but he got a big crush on Charlemagne. And he was like, now you see how them, them married men be giving them mixed signals. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. Yep, I sure do see. Don't mm -hmm. let your feelings for me, sir. Okay, make you think <laughs> that I was flirting with you in any way, he shape, was or form. Okay, so, I'm just a nice person. But you know what? My people's, right, them people's, right, that be with me that y'all don't be paying attention to, they always say to me... That you be giving? No. <laughs> yes, they, 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 they do. They do. They think I give a little too much. They hey, was like, yo. you know, you, you sure you want to speak and talk to people? Watch what I do from now on. Oh, God. You're going to get mush next time. You're going to get mush. Oh, my God. No, no. <laughs> don't please. be mushing nobody don't now. Mush no might like it. Please. All right. <laughs> Let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Okay. How do you know the difference between someone complimenting you and someone flirting yeah. with you? That's right. Please yeah. tell these people. Right. They because be thinking that just because you nice. Uh, you like them Well if he was flirting With the young well, man the way, Just say he was flirting Men always feel like that With women Like mm -hmm. if a woman Just nice to a guy Hi You're like oh she want me Right I didn't know gay men Feel the same way Yeah it, I don't know It could have been A squint in your eye You know cause yeah. you You could have been Putting on that That lip balm aggressive oh, yeah, When you know, he walked yeah. up you Cause he put, he put his finger All in his mouth mm -hmm. Like he trying to brush his teeth Like all that Yeah like look See, It's like That is it. not that, the that, way Can you What's imagine up? Your lips on the Your face Hey Charlemagne And you doing that He be touching his tonsils See See yeah, exactly. You want to with that gentleman. So you low-key right. 800-585-1051. <laughs> How do you know the difference between someone complimenting and flirting? Mm -hmm. Charlemagne putting chapstick on his lips extra hard while you saying, yeah. hey. And by the way, that never happened, by the way. 
Huh? Yeah. He be trying to gag himself. And I'm like, dang, if I'm dry. No, I'm serious. That's disgusting. This thing all back there. We'll take your calls when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, we're talking about Charlemagne giving out in Atlanta, of all places, this weekend. Yes. So what happened in Atlanta this weekend? One of my friends called me and told me that he was creeping at a chair convention. Mm. And I was like, uh-uh, that's because his family is there. He has, you know, a 15-year-old and a wife. And he was like, a wife? Oh, he was low-key giving because I spoke to him and he was very much, you know, trying to low-key mm-hmm. give, like flirt with him. That's what he was insinuating. Mm-hmm. And he was like, mm. when I told him that he had a wife, he was so disappointed. He was like, see, that these these uh, married men be giving mixed signals. So. Mm-hmm. What mixed signals? Just because you nice to a human? Mm-hmm. I well, it seems like you do this because we have a young lady on the phone, or m- maybe a man. I don't want to. I don't want to. Let me see. And uh, <laughs> he or she says she met Charlemagne before, and it was similar. Hello. 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 Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Hey, Please good morning. tell us what's your name, Mama. Sir? Hi. I'm Sharon. Oh, Sharon. Um, yes. Um, so I want to just briefly just talk about an interaction that I had with Charlemagne. Mm-hmm. And Charlemagne, this is going to be a compliment to you. Okay. So I took my kids. My daughter at that time was in her early 20s. My son was an 11-year-old. And you were at an event. I can't remember the event. And we stood on your book signing. We stood on your, online to get the book signed. And you took the time with each one of my children and myself to speak to us, look directly in our eyes and engage. So I can see how people can interpret that as flirting. But it really, to me, came across as being very sincere. And my kids remember that to this day. They remember meeting you. So... Well, that's beautiful. You thought okay. I was flirting with your kids. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. That's essentially what you just said. That's what she said. Well, my daughter is cute, and she was in her 20s, so. Yes, <laughs> wow. you were very sincere. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, oh, so, you hold on. Just talk, his... so just talking to people and saying hi and treating people like humans No, so you gazed into his eyes and was like, okay, how you doing? Yeah. No, I try happened. to connect with people. If you take the time to come to my <laughs> book signing, purchase a book, and stand online, why wouldn't I... Have a moment with you. Oh, no, no. I'm talking about the moment in um, in Atlanta. I don't even remember this dude you're talking about. I bet Hel- you don't. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's up? This is B. What's up, what's B? What's up, B? You got an incident with Charlamagne flirting with you, too? Nah, nah. I oh. I'm just saying, like, uh, I, I, get what he, I get what he's saying, though. It's almost like you got to go out of your way. You know what I'm saying? So, like, as far as if you, if you just, like, talking to a gay person, you're nice to a gay person. Because if you, you're too nice, then that gay dog go off. Mm-hmm. And they feel like like it's, it's given, so you know I'm kind of with Charlamagne in that regard. Yeah, I don't understand why I gotta be given just because I was nice to you. you that's what he. Hello, he... Hey, hello, hello. Hey, Sean Stone, what's up? Hey, peace and blessing, man. What's going on? Peace and blessing. You, you see what we're talking about this morning? You know, what's the difference between complimenting and flirting? What's your thoughts? Uh, I think a lot of times, man, it's not good to give compliments or anything like that because. A lot of times, people gonna read it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Charlemagne was just being nice, nice to the gay dude, but he took it like, "Oh, he's flirting with me." And exactly. a lot of times, they take it wrong. Hey, exactly. Jess, love you. I love you too. No okay. God. And then for this, right, for, for this man to be disappointed, and he got a whole husband. Yeah, he got a whole husband. Yeah. But, he was ready to, but you got a whole wife. So. Exactly. So why are you going to disappointed because I'm married? Well, maybe he thought maybe it would have been a great weekend. I don't know. Yes, and you was his longtime crush. This man has been like talking about you for years. Like, yeah, like before he, I even started liking you. He's been watching he too many you. Tyler Perry movies. He wanted oh to blow in his eye or something. And y'all was in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, that is not a Tyler Perry movie. That's movie was cover that? with Leon. What was it called? It's called Cover. Cover, yeah. When yes. he was like, he was blowing your eye. You got you something got in your eye. Yeah. And if the guy be like, oh, yeah, let me get it out. That means he gay. What are y'all talking about? You know, it's a movie, movie named no, Cover. Never you guys watch it. It's so good. That movie's so crazy. And then the, the funny part about that movie, it ends. I thought the dude was delivered, but it ends with him at the door talking about, you got, you got something in your eye. <laughs> yeah. And the guy walking up, he's like, okay, so y'all do that here, too. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus I love that Christ. movie. 800 585 1051. So Charlemagne was flirting all over the weekend. I was not flirting with land. nobody. So we're asking, how do you know the difference between someone complimenting and flirting? It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious. Charlemagne, the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Over the weekend, Charlemagne was in Atlanta. Giving, honey. Yes. I was in Atlanta for my daughter's uh, cheer competition. Okay. Cheer sport. Right? So he was low-key giving that. He, he was low-key giving. That's yeah. right. So uh, 
Jess got a call over the weekend about Charlemagne giving. Yes, yes. And my friend, you know, my friend really, really likes Charlemagne. You know, even, although he's married as well, you know, we don't know what marriage setup they have over there. And um, and <laughs> he was very disturbed to find out that Charlemagne had a wife. Mm. And he thought that Charlamagne was giving him mixed signals because of how he was squinting and looking to his eyes. Mm-hmm. He was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> I was not squinting. <laughs> I'm just old and can't see. <laughs> okay. But well, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Yo, peace. This is Finesse. Peace. Grand Rising, everybody, man. Finesse, peace. Finesse. Finesse. Grand, don't say Grand Rising. We not biscuits. Well, Grand Beginners. Grand Beginners. Sorry. Go. But par up with our beloved. Yes, All right, sir. so we're talking about uh, Charlemagne uh, and what he did this weekend. You know, we're trying to figure the difference between complimenting somebody and somebody flirting. What's your thoughts, bro? Uh, so I feel flirting. Flirting is a, at a different exchange of energy as far as when it comes to a woman is going to acknowledge you. She's going to give you that, that, that mindful know, like, yo, listen, I'm looking at you. I'm, I'm observing you, and this is what I want. But at the end of the day, if you don't read the signs, you don't read it. Like I said, like it's an energy exchange. If you don't accept that ex- energy exchange, then you ain't gonna find nothing else in that. A compliment is just, a, you know what I mean? It's just like, yo, you looking good. That, that's it, nothing more, nothing less. I don't need your number, I don't need your Instagram, I don't need nothing. You just made me feel good about myself today. Thank you, Kum. I mean, I don't have a problem saying, yo, brother, those some nice sneakers, or yo, how you doing? You got a beautiful smell, or, you know what I mean? Like that's it, just keep it moving. I don't have to get to know you after that. Wait, 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 w
but Charlamagne got a little swag. Y'all gotta see him outside this chair. And he be walking up all swaggy, and the guy turned around. He was like, "Oh my god, you Charlamagne?" He's like, "Yeah, I am. What's up? How you doing? You know what I mean?" I ain't say a whole of that. I don't even remember meeting this human. Okay. Oh, god. you sure now? But you don't from remember now meeting on, him. security, mush him, <laughs> keep him away from me. Okay. <laughs> all right, we got okay. Jess with the mess coming up. Yes, yes, we do. Y'all be coming up real quick with it. Um. Somebody was robbed over the weekend. We'll get to it after this. All right, we'll get to it. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess. Jess, 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 Who's that in the intro that say, Jeff's going to bring you numbers? Who's that? I think oh, a listener. I, I think a it was a listener. listener. I think a listener. I love that. That's too clean to be a listener. I love Man. that. Sound like they was in studio. Who like was that, interview. Taylor? It sounded like an interview. Taylor mm-hmm. texted us to tell us who that was. That mm-hmm. said, Jeff's going to bring you numbers. Well, until we find out who that is, Doja Cat blamed the energy drink for her Cardi B impression. So uh, Doja Cat did an episode of uh, Therapy Gecko with Lyle Drescher. Um, she spoke about the moment that she did an imp- uh, impression of Cardi B and received backlash for it. I like almost got into a beef because of Celsius. I blame the Celsius. It's not me. Like I, I. So I was singing a song. The song, like I filmed myself doing the song in the crazy voice, and it was like my really bad impression of that person. And people took it super wrong. They like thought that I was like trying to like start cause drama and like issues, when really I was just being a. Absolutely. This is the impression. It sounds like she was watching Love on the Spectrum and she was making fun of one of them. I'll tell you this though. If she hadn't had said at the end of that audio yeah i'm gonna be canceled yep. nobody would have cared mm-hmm. yep yep because uh at the end of the audio she did sit out watch i'm gonna be don't cancel me all right that she did it for she did it on purpose she's also done other impressions so i think people just be so psyched out about how great and how well they can do impressions that they they just don't care because she's also uh um did an impression of scissor share ariana grande beyonce and britney spears she's actually really good at it she, she actually ate that up but the fact that i think probably why cardi b got upset is because a lot of people always joke about how how bad like her English is and how she can't talk and all of her and Jocelyn and Anders, people have been making fun of their accents and how they talk forever so uh, but yeah she was being a butthole about it but is that making fun of how the Cardi talks or just like you you making fun of her rap cadence I think and both I, I think know it's I mean? just both just the yeah. rap cadence yeah. of that record yeah. that particular record yeah yeah. I, I think all of it but mm-hmm. if that, that energy make drink make you do that Nah, she oh, was lying. Oh, oh, okay. She always oh. acting all dumb like that on, on live. <laughs> you just doing all types of stupid stuff. Like, you know, to go viral. So she already knew what was up. Mm. She ding dong. Like, she already did that. Ding she, dong. She already know. But she ate that up, though. Uh, DJ Khaled's cousin cuts him off. So DJ Khaled's cousin, uh, Fadi Masalet, spoke to uh, the Neighborhood Talk. And he explained that he had distanced himself from DJ Khaled for not speaking on a genocide happening in Palestine. Playing number three. Drake is the most famous Jewish person on no, that's, that's not his three. cousin. Play number three. That's not his yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you know, everyone has their reasons, but there's no reasons, there's no excuse when you're actually a Palestinian. You know what I mean? And um, and for me, my mother lives there. You know what I mean? Uh, we're from the same village, same families. So like, there's no excuse. And uh, right now, my heart and dedications everything with Palestine and uh, I go there a lot my, like I said my mother lives there I do a lot of charity work with a lot of refugee camps there um, I do a lot of fundraisers to raise money for Gaza and, and uh, all the all the refugees and outside of Gaza in the West Bank does Khaled know that's his cousin? absolutely probably so okay I hate uh, that though I, I, I yeah. hate that because it's, it's, your mission is not my mission yeah. because I don't understand or maybe I don't know or maybe I don't know in detail or maybe I'm doing things that people don't know about mm-hmm. and I just don't want to say. Yeah, I agree with that last you know point I mean? that you said. Maybe he is. How do we know he's not doing anything? Correct. Um, just That's because right. he hadn't said it publicly or put mm-hmm. it out there. But this isn't the first time that um, DJ Khaled has been criticized uh, for saying this. DJ Vlad actually talk- talked to uh, Charlemagne about this at the Breakfast Club. Now, <laughs> like I was just here, Drake myself. is the most famous <laughs> Jewish person on earth, essentially. Khaled is the most famous Thanks, Palestinian Jeff. in the world. But neither one of them has said anything 
about this at all. Mm-hmm. And people are saying, well, well, they're not politicians, whatever. They influence hundreds of millions of people, which ultimately has an influence on the world. And you're not choosing to, to like to say anything. Well, why does he have to say anything? Him or, like, why, why does why does him or Khaled have to say anything publicly? They don't have to say anything. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying as, as representatives of these communities, their voices are powerful and they should say something. I don't know why people want them to speak out about these issues so bad like I, I don't know what they're doing you know behind the scenes mm-hmm. I don't know how they feel mm-hmm. about these situations but why do we have to hear it like what does it matter if they well, say something well maybe they're not talking about us maybe they're talking about the Palestinians you know the Palestinians and the people that they, they're from there I mean I guess you know they this is a big group of people uh that, that I, I feel that they feel like they want to be supported by two of the, the mainstream, like, biggest I, but, people. But you don't I know how they feel. Out those yeah. people that are in Palestine are sitting around thinking, when is Khaled going to say something? No, yeah. they're trying to survive every day. Yeah, I understand what, what you're saying. Yep. DJ Flat also said uh, it's because both are so thirsty to maintain their relevance that they wouldn't dare risk insulting the segment of their fan base. So, yeah, and the reason why I said he he mm-hmm. talked to Charlemagne at the breakfast club was you was the only one who basically said what you just said. How do we know? How do we know that they're not saying anything? How do we know that they're just, you know? <laughs> so that's that's why I said you. I'm pretty sure. I asked the question, no, Jen. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's what you said. I'm sorry, Amy. I'm sorry. All right, look. <laughs> Last story. DC Young Fly was robbed in L.A. Um, what? Yeah, DC Young Fly was apparently robbed at Hollywood Improv. He posted to his Instagram and said, I just want my bag back. I'm going to have some personal things and uh, personal belongings in there. I was at the Hollywood Improv. And he also captioned, just to, just politely find a way to get it back to me. I had personal things in there. Mm. Um, I thought this story was important because, man, like, it, L.A. is very dangerous. When you say Rob, what you mean? Like somebody came up to him with that thing out or they just oh, stole it, something so from him? So the story is still uh, developing. Okay. So um, allegedly he was robbed. At uh, at the Hollywood Improv, um, I doubt somebody walked up on DC. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That. Somebody yeah. must have stole his bag out the back. Like Absolutely. when he was performing, he left his bag in, in, they, in the dressing room. And somebody more like. than likely yeah. took it because they know that he was just there. Um, so that's that's also that's important. So I hope hope hopefully he got his uh, his bag back. And then I also wanted to include that comedian Coco Brown. Um, she lost her house in Georgia, and she it caught fire, and she and her twelve sons. Um, 12 sons. Yeah, 12 she sons? and her 12 son, Phoenix, no, were able to make son, it up. 12-year-old son, I'm sure. 12-year-old son. Okay, well, look, this is from somebody that I know. This <laughs> nigga named Rob, Sta- uh, Rob Stapleton. Rob Stapleton. In, 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 uh, in Bronx, Snoop all right? Rob. Rob, what yeah, up, Rob? I'm telling you, he is <laughs> one Stapleton. He's funny. He Rob can tell jokes. He sons. cannot write at all, though. Jesus. I'm just trying to do my due diligence, man. All right, so comedian Coco Brown, yeah, she lost the house in Georgia. Her 12-year-old son, Phoenix, <laughs> were able to make it out safely, but the house is destroyed. They lost their clothes and everything. Everything. Um, and they're currently staying at a shelter until mm-hmm. they get uh, things back in order, which is so so sad. So, uh, if uh, you can mention their, they have a GoFundMe. Go they go have a GoFundMe. Yeah, I'm so looking cool. at it right now. Go to yeah, I mean, this, he can't spell, yo. I just told him I would say this because it's really sad seeing, you know, somebody go through this. You know what I mean? Like and the fact that she has twelve sons. And the fact that she. <laughs> She has a 12-year-old. Uh, yeah, you ain't got to say all that, Rob. I'm going to donate to the GoFundMe. Don't tell me she got 12 kids and she don't have 12 kids. <laughs> no, I, That's why probably, Rob did that. Rob wanted you mistake. to stay that on the he air. He said, make, <laughs> her, make her 12 <laughs> son. How 12 sons Phoenix were able. Yeah, That's a 12-year-old so son Phoenix. It didn't say that. Oh, Rob. Um, so that's what he meant, though. They got a goal of 50 grand for her. She's yes. at 40,000. I'm about to leave something on her. That's GoFundMe amazing. Right that's now. amazing. Mm-hmm. I told him I would I do I don't this. even know her, but I'm going to do that. Yeah, comedian Coco Brown, y'all. I have heard of her uh, before, and she's well-known in um, God, Georgia. Hey, so. yeah. 19% yeah, tip? What? Oh, GoFundMe. They ain't shaking no tip wow. for no GoFundMe. Yeah, I'm about to say no. I, I always, wow. <laughs> I always want to do those people get all their money because I know GoFundMe has to cut into it. Coco Brown, but That's do right. they? Yeah. Stories on TMZ too. If you want to read more about it, they got yeah. pictures. Very sad. I'm leaving yeah, something exactly. right now. All right. Well, that is Jess with the mess. Thank, Thank you, Jess. You. Thank you. And don't send me no more DMs about sad stories or no stories if y'all can't type, <laughs> y'all. Damn. All right. When we come back, we got the People's Choice mix. Let's go. 
You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. It's Black History Month. What we doing with B Dot? Listen, man, you know, every uh, every every day during Black History Month, B Dot puts out a podcast called I Didn't Know, Maybe You Didn't Either on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. And today, he is going to tell you a story that you may not have known about, uh, an event that unfolded on 42nd Street and 5th Avenue in New York City back during the Civil War. Take it away, B-Dot. One of the largest amounts of casualties during the Civil War didn't happen on the battlefield. It happened in New York City at an orphanage. 42nd Street and 5th Avenue in New York City was the location. It's now Midtown Manhattan. There was a black orphanage. And during the Civil War, the North needed more soldiers. So they had a draft in New York City. See, white folks could pay to dodge the draft. Remember, black folks weren't even citizens, so they couldn't be drafted. So it was just the working class white men available for the draft. And those white men were angry. They were so angry at black folks that they went on another one of them good old white killing sprees where just being black was a death sentence. Massacres Monday this season is dedicated to those very atrocities. Them white folks went in the city and killed 120 black men, women, and children. Just unalived them. Then went to the Colored Orphans Asylum, broke in with bats and pickaxes, burnt it to the ground like Andre Risen's house in the 90s. All of the children escaped. None died. Many of them fled to Blackwell's Island, what is now Roosevelt Island in New York. Most of the other black folks in that now midtown Manhattan area fled to Harlem or Brooklyn. And the demographics still show those numbers today. On our commute to school in the morning, my 11-year-old daughter and I, after completing our affirmations, we just have conversations about everything from integrity to civil rights to enslavement periods. And she asked me one morning, she said, Dad, when the KKK started beating up the black people, what will happen to the kids? And I looked in the rearview mirror and we locked eyes and I told my 11-year-old baby girl, the Klan would beat up the kids too, Ryan. And she said, and they would kill the kids too? I said, yes, baby. Those racist white Klansmen would kill the black kids too. And I could see the innocence leave her eyes. 120 black men, women, and children were killed that summer day, July 13th, 1863. 2,000 people were injured. And I didn't know. Maybe you didn't either. I I will salute to be that. Yes, indeed. When we come back, we got the positive notice. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Again, uh, salute to everybody. I was all over this, all over the place this weekend. I was in Atlanta for Tycoon, then Indiana for the All Star. Then I went to uh, spoke at the commencement at Lincoln Tech. Salute to all the Lincoln Tech students. Uh, shout to Maris College. I went there for for their event and their game. Salute to everybody that goes to Maris College, a D one school in Poughkeepsie. Uh, I was in Norfolk for their R and B show. So I just want to say salute to everybody that I ran into over the weekend. I appreciate you guys. Had a great weekend. Now, Jess, what do you do this weekend? I know you got your crib together. Yes, I got my crib together, but I'm also preparing for my birthday party, which is March 2nd, y'all, surrounding CIAA weekend in Baltimore. That's Saturday, right? That, yep, that is March 2nd. Saturday, March 2nd. It's called um, Opulence 2.0. It's the big birthday bash, and it's called... The whole thing is Crown the Queen, because... I officially am the third host, y'all. Correct. So, because Baltimore was very mad at me at that uh, premature announcement. Um, so, <laughs> so now that y'all see me up here in this baby shower chair, yeah, now y'all got to crown me, period. So that's awesome. So we're gonna be celebrating me Saturday, March second. This the party is from eight to. 12, because we're not doing 10 to 2. I'm not gonna be out there partying like that, and I'm not able to drink. So eight to 12. You can get your tickets at stillsensationalevents.com. Click the link in my bio and um, hit up Dave Kowser for a uh, VIP section. Salute to Dave. Mm-hmm. Thank you. The party will be at the Baltimore Peninsula. And yes, there is parking available. That's 2455 House Street. And you know, we was going to do uh, the Breakfast Club Day Party at CIAA Weekend with Jess. But you know, when we was playing around, like we didn't know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Dave was like, F them. We don't rock. Ba- whole Baltimore cut us off. <laughs> we wasn't good in Baltimore. <laughs> you know what? I mean, that they put us back on? No, no, absolutely, no, 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 no. We wasn't good in Baltimore, you know what no. I mean. So we, we all had to play the role. I'm sorry, yeah, but I'm glad that y'all was still able to do um, something. That's yes, right, absolutely, yes. and that something is Saturday, March second. So get your tickets. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, you got a positive note, Charlemagne. 
Yes, I do, man. And it's all about boundaries. You know, we talked about boundaries during Donkey of the Day. Do not be afraid to set boundaries ever, okay? And always remember when it comes to boundaries, if someone gets upset, throws a fit because you set boundaries, it's just more evidence the boundary was needed. Have a great day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?